Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video on equations. In this video, we're going to look at how to solve equations which involve indices or roots. So let's have a look at our first question. Our first question says solve x to the power of a half equals 8. Now to solve an equation, we want to do the inverse operations to both sides until we're left with x equals a certain number. So here we've got x to the power of a half. Now the power of a half means the square root. So we would want to do the opposite of the inverse operation. So instead of square rooting, we're going to square both sides of this equation. So squaring the left hand side, well that would just leave us with x. And squaring the right hand side would give us what well, 8 squared is 64. So our answer would be x equals 64. And to check our answer, we could just substitute the 64 in. So 64 to the power of a half. Well, that's the square root of 64, which is 8. So that's right. So if you've got an equation where it's x to the power of a half, to solve it, you would just square both sides of the equation. If it was x to the power of a third, well, that means the cubed root of x, well, then we would cube both sides of the equation. If it, if it was x to the power of a quarter, well, that means the fourth root, so we would do it to the power of four to both sides of the equation. So if you've got an equation where you've got x to the power of one over something, you would just take that power, the denominator, and you would do that power to both sides of the equation, and you would solve your equation. Okay, let's have a look at a question now where it's not a one on the numerator. So our next question, solve x to the power of three quarters equals eight. Now, x to the power of three quarters, that's the same as saying the fourth root of x and then cubing it. So whenever we want to solve this equation, we want to do the inverse. So instead of doing the cubing, we're going to cube root both sides of the equation. And then instead of the fourth root, we're going to do to the power of four to both sides of the equation. So first of all, let's do the cube root, the opposite of this cubing. So taking the cube root, looking at the numerator, it's a three. So we're going to take the cube root of both sides of the equation. And so taking the cube root of the left-hand side, well, that would just be x to the power of a quarter. We're doing it to get rid of the three on the numerator. And the cube root of the left-hand side, well, the cube root of eight is equal to two. Now, it is with this part of the equation, it's just like our last question. If we want to solve this we want to do the inverse operation of the fourth root so that would be to the power of four so that would leave us with x and two to the power of four well two to the power of four is equal to two times two times two times two well two times two is four times two is eight times two is sixteen so the answer would be x equals sixteen and again we can check our answer sixteen well the fourth root of sixteen is equal to two and cubed is equal to eight and that's it Right, so our next question says solve x to the power of negative 2 equals 9. So this question's got a negative power, so we're going to have to be careful whenever we're solving this. So x to the power of negative 2, well, that's the same as 1 over x squared. When you've got a negative power, you can write it as 1 over, or the reciprocal. Now we'll come back to that later on in the question to show you how you can sort of do this question using a slightly different approach. So we've got 1 over x squared equals 9. Now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x squared, so that'll give us 1 equals 9x squared. And then we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 9 to get 1 ninth equals x squared. Now we've got to be careful here because what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides, but we've got to be careful because we've got x squared equals 1 ninth. Now a positive squared is a positive, but also a negative squared is equal to a positive. So whenever we square both sides, we need to remember that we could have the positive or the negative solution. Whenever you've got x squared equals a number, a positive number, and you're square rooting it, you could have the positive or negative root. So we have got the square root of a ninth. So the square root of a ninth, well, square root of one is one, and square root of nine is equal to three. So that means that x will be equal to positive or negative one third. And I'm just gonna write out and fill that x equals one third, or x equals negative one third. And we can check our answers. So if we had one third, and we done to the power of negative two, that would be the reciprocal of that. Well, the reciprocal of a third is equal to three, and squared is nine, and that's our solution there. Or if we had negative a third, well, the reciprocal of that would be negative three, and squared would be nine. So there's our two solutions. Now, there was a slightly different approach we could have taken on that question. Rather than starting off by writing one over x squared, so what we could have done was we could have taken the reciprocal of both sides to begin with to get rid of the negative sign. Because the negative sign means one over, if we get rid of that, we can just say, well, x squared, that's taking the reciprocal of it, is equal to one ninth. And that could mean that we could just go straight to this part here. And then we could square root both sides, remembering it's the positive or negative solution. Okay, our next question. Our next question is to solve the cube root of nine x minus one equals four. So again, we want to do the inverse operations to both sides. This is the cube root, so we're going to cube both sides of this equation. So cubing the left-hand side would just leave us with 9x minus 1, and cubing the right-hand side would be 64. 
Now we need to find what 9x is, so we're going to add 1 to both sides. So 9x equals 65, and then dividing by 9 would give us x equals 65 over 9. And so x equals 65 over 9, and that doesn't simplify, so that's our solution. And that's it. Okay, next question. Our next question is a little bit different because we have x to the power of 3 halves, but then we've got a mixed number here of 4 and 17 over 27. What we're going to do is we're going to write this as a top-heavy fraction to begin with, and that might help us. So we've got x to the power of 3 over 2, and writing this as a top-heavy fraction, well, 4 times 27, well, 4 times 27 is equal to 108, plus 17 is equal to 125. And then that's going to be over the denominator stays the same, so that's 27. Now, to solve this, remember, we're going to take whatever is on the numerator, we're going to take that root of both sides. So we've got our cubed here, so we need to do the inverse, which is the cube root of both sides. And that's quite nice because both of the numbers are cube numbers. So it's going to give us x to the half, getting rid of the 3, would equal. And taking the cube root of both of these numbers would give us, well, the cube root of 125 is 5, and the cube root of 27 is equal to 3. And then finally, we've got x to the power of a half, which is the square root, so we need to square both sides of the equation. So squaring both sides will give us x equals 25 over 9. And that's it. Right, so our last two questions are a little bit different than the ones we've done so far because they involve the laws of indices. So here we've got our first question. It says solve 3 to the power of 4x equals 27 to the power of 5 minus x. Now, in this question, we've got our 3 and our 27. Now, these numbers aren't chosen at random. Um, they're chosen because 27 is equal to 3 cubed. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the 27 as 3 cubed. So we've got 3 to the power of 4x equals 3 cubed to the power of 5 minus x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the laws of indices here. So we've got a power of a power. So whenever you've got uh, x to the power of a all to the power of b, that would be the same as x to the a b. So you multiply the a and the b. So if we multiply the 3, this cubed, by the 5 minus x, then we can write it as 3 to the power of 15 minus 3x. So that will give us, on the left-hand side, 3 to the power of 4x equals, and multiplying the 3 here, the cubed, by the 5 and the minus x will give us 3 to the power of 15 minus 3x. Now we've got 3 to the power of something equals 3 to the power of something. So that means that the two somethings must be the same. So in other words, that must give us 4x equals 15 minus 3x. Now to solve this, we can just add 3x to both sides of the equation, so that'll be 7x equals 15, and dividing by 7 gives us x equals 15 over 7. That's it. So if we've got a question where you've got the 3 and the 27, you can write the 27 as 3 cubed, and then use the laws of indices to solve it. Let's have a look at a similar question now, so similar but a little bit different. We've got a question where it says solve 8 to the power of 4 plus x over 4 to the power of 5 minus x equals 0.5. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the 0.5 as a half. So we're going to write x or 8 to the power of 4 plus x over 4 to the power of 5 minus x equals a half. Now, all of these, the 8, the 4, and the half, are all numbers which can be written as powers of 2. 8 is the same as 2 cubed. 4 is obviously 2 squared. And a half well, that's the same as 2 to the minus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 cubed to the power of 4 plus x over 2 squared to the power of 5 minus x equals 2 to the negative 1. So then what I'm now going to do is, well, I'm actually going to make a bit of space, and then what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to use the laws of indices here because these are powers of a power, so I'm going to multiply these two powers together. So that'll be 2 to the power of 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times x is plus 3x over, and then times in the powers together here will give us 2 to the power of, well, 2 times 5 is equal to 10, and 2 times minus x will be minus 2x, and that equals 2 to the negative 1. Now here we've got 2 to the power of something divided by 2 to the power of something. Again, using the laws of indices, if you had x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b, that's the same as x to the power of a minus b. You take away the powers. So here, if we have 2 to the power of 12 plus 3x over 2 to the power of 10 minus 2x, if we take away the powers, we can write it as 2 to the power of something. So let's take away the powers and see what do we get. So if we had 12 plus 3x and we subtract from that, 
10 minus 2x. Well, that will give us, well, 12 take away 10 is 2. And 3x minus minus 2x, will that be plus 5x? So that means that the left-hand side would become 2 to the power of 2 plus 5x. And that equals 2 to the negative 1. Now, if you've got 2 to the power of something equals 2 to the power of something, well, that means the two somethings must be equal to each other. So that means that 2 plus 5x must be the same as minus 1. So let's write that down. 2 plus 5x is equal to negative 1. So let's just take 2 away from both sides of the equation. So that'll be 5x equals negative 3. And dividing by 5 would give us x equals negative 3 fifths. And that's it.